Hello everyone, this is Katie. Today I'm going to be doing a one brush challenge. The brush I'm using is the Grunge Scatter Brush on the brush set by Erin Griffin. This brush is pretty chaotic. You can see if you make it small, you can get quite a precise line, but in its largest size, it's just this ginormous scatter of grungy mess um, that's just quite fun to work with. So yeah, can I, can I wrangle a portrait out of this? And if so, what's it going to look like? Um, I'll give you a link to Erin Griffin's uh, brushes. They are free, so you are able to download them for no charge. Or alternatively, you can provide a donation to Erin as another struggling artist. Well, he's probably not struggling. His work's fantastic. Um, so I'm getting started. This is Alyssa on the left-hand side, who kindly shares her reference pictures through the Kenyo chat. Um... I'm just really squinting down at the picture on the left side, left hand side. Alyssa is very strongly lit from above, so it's got some really distinct shadows and bright areas. So it makes it really good for this kind of blocking style. So yeah, squinting on the left hand side and looking at the shapes and just trying to rough those in with the brush. I've got the brush set fairly small and I'm applying, applying it quite lightly. I really don't want to commit yet to specific lines. Um, so just trying to get everything roughly in the right place. In retrospect, I did a pretty rubbish job with this block in. I didn't spend enough time getting everything in the right place. Um, to be honest, I was just sitting doing this in front of the TV on the sofa. So maybe I was a little bit distracted. Um, and just kind of rushing forward to, to start filling in areas before I really had the initial block in really where it needed to be. So, I mean... It's a mistake I make over and over again. If you rush the first stage, then you're going to spend way more time fixing it later on in the process. But I mean, it can be done. It's procreate, so it, you, it's not like if you're drawing with traditional mediums and you get it wrong, there's only so much a paper can take. Um, you really can work in on these and fix them further down the line. So I guess from that perspective, it's sometimes a bit rubbish where it's very forgiving of my rubbish habits. Um <clears throat> So I'm, I use the lasso select tool. I'm, I'm using this quite a lot in this drawing because, because the brush is very chaotic and scattered, I, I find it hard to get very precise lines. So if I wanted a very sharp line, I will use the lasso select tool. So you select the, the areas that you want to fill with colour freehand and then just stamp colour into those areas. Um, and then I've gone in and softened the edges that I don't want to be too sharp obviously if you are losing using the lasso select you'll get all the edges will be sharp which is what we don't want we want a combination of sharp and soft edges so so yeah doing a little bit of that and you'll see that throughout the process so I almost use the lasso select tool to kind of collage in areas of tone um, so that's something that I use to build up the picture but here I'm really working on those edges again I'm spending I'm doing this too early so rather than just finding the dark areas and blocking those in and then looking at them and figuring out what's wrong and then refining them I've done a sort of winging it and, and kind of diving into the detail again I suspect that's because I'm doing this while watching tv <laughs> so I'm not really being mindful of going through the right process but I mean it's don't do what I do but I think in terms of the the getting things in the wrong order but I think generally this is quite a fun challenge to just use one brush and then use that lasso select tool to kind of fill the areas so maybe the lesson learned is don't follow the process but maybe use some of the same techniques as me <laughs> i'm not sure So as this is a one brush challenge, I've set both my eraser and my smudge brush as being that exact same brush. Um, I do quite like it because it gives a very consistent look and a consistent appearance. The brush is chaotic and varied enough that that's not going to do the, the whole picture a disservice. I think sometimes if it's too uniform, it just looks a bit boring. But the brush is chaotic enough that I can just make do with that one brush and have still have an effect that's quite varied and interesting in the final picture. 
So I'm going over areas again and again. So in general, I'm applying the brush very lightly. So having these really misty tones, but by selecting areas and applying the color again and again, then it builds up these you know, quite deep tones and dark tones over a period of time. So you can see I've fallen into my usual trap. Um, I've started developing one eye and the other eye is just completely absent. <laughs> I do this quite a lot. Um, I'm not really sure why. It used to be a really bad, bad habit of mine because then I would end up getting the second hat I really, really wrong. I think maybe through devoted and regular practice, my skills improved a little bit. So I can usually catch the second eye up with the first eye without it looking too rubbish. Um, so yeah, something <laughs> well, thankfully is less of a problem than it used to be and less of a bad habit than it used to be. So here I'm using the lasso tool to kind of really block in that dark area. Again, what I absolutely should have done before trying to free eyeball select the area is use my um, my brush to try and figure out where those edges were. I didn't do that, so I got a few things in the wrong place. Um, yeah, I just felt I needed to develop that background. Um, she's got very you know she's sitting in a dark room with a very bright light so i wanted to rather than just draw her face i wanted to get you know the whole picture in i wanted to get the darkness of the background in the picture and i've done that very quickly or shortcutted that very quickly by selecting the area i want to be dark and then just you know applying that brush quite with a more heavy hand so it really stamps in that texture um you're getting some quite defined shapes in those areas and then coming in again with the lasso select, but this time using the eraser and erasing areas. So again, I'm using, I'm trying to use all my brushes, um, not just the the brush, you know, to apply color, but also the eraser to take it away again. I mean, you can see because I didn't have a lot of time blocking in the, the, the shape correctly, I'm trying to kind of fix it on the fly. I can see that I've got her, the line of her, the edge of her face on the left hand side and below her jaw, not quite right. Um, so at the moment, this looks is looking a little bit messy. <laughs> and But I mean, I'm going to come in and fix it. So yeah, so it's just looking, this is what I would call the ugly stage for sure. Um, it's got areas of it I quite like, but it's also quite ugly and stuff is in the, the wrong place. Um, but I'll figure it out. I think just softening some of those sharp edges is immediately will make it look a lot better. You can see, I and I, I come in and fix that later, so there's, there's stuff wrong with this still. Um, if you look at the shape of her the cheek on the right hand side as you look at the picture i've not got that right it's she her face is too wide at the bottom i've also got the ear looks like the ears in the wrong place um so i'm gonna have to come in and fix that now i'm trying to feel my way to figure out where the eye is again because her face is and that's that's clearly wrong <laughs> so i'm just commenting on where i've drawn the eyes no it's not in the right place um so because her face, I've not got her face shape right, then I'm struggling a little bit to figure out where the eye is because I don't really know what I'm looking at. So again, this is a good argument for why it's good to get the block in right, to figure out where the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the edge of the face is before you start diving into detail. That's not to say you can't find those things, but it makes it a lot more difficult if you don't nail those down early on in the process. So yeah, it's important to work big to small, not big to small, to medium, to small, to big, to, to medium, etc.
You can still see here that I'm trying to figure out where that eye is. It's a little bit of a challenge. I've sort of had a little crack at it and then I've chickened out and started working on the hair instead. Um, perhaps I'm hoping if I develop the rest of the drawing and get that accurate, then establishing where the eye is is going to become a lot easier. Or perhaps I'm just getting sidetracked by the never-ending Avatar movie that I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see here I'm, I'm trying to develop the shadow around the side of the face. I'm just kind of nudging it inwards, getting closer and closer to where it should actually be. Um, you can still see that her the cheek on the left-hand side, you look at the picture, is still too wide. Um, yeah, I'll just get there eventually, for sure. But um, I've definitely made my life more difficult. I mean, this, this drawing took me about an hour. It really should have taken me about 40 minutes. So, yeah, I've added quite a lot of time onto the process by being inefficient. So you can see... Um, I am finally coming in with a pencil and trying to figure out where the ear should be. Um, building up some tone on the right hand side of the face. So I'm just kind of feeling my way around. I, I'm, I'm kind of circling in on that eye basically. So I've tried to go in and get the eye right. I've kind of struggled. So I've gone outwards and worked my way back in again. So I'm really yeah, circling in on that eye and trying to get it in the right place. Something I sometimes like to do is to build up some tone on her nose so I can like really pop that that highlight on the corner of the nose. Um, obviously, I'm taking some liberties here. If you look at the picture on the left hand side, her nose isn't darker than the cheek next to it, um, like I've drawn it. But in doing that, I've yeah, I've been able to pop that highlight. So it kind of it just looks cool. Um, so I've, it's just something I've observed other artists do and I've just kind of picked up the habit myself um, sometimes. So yeah, definitely taking a lot of liberties here with my interpretation of the photograph. And there's no rule that says that we need to absolutely get, you know, 100% accuracy and likeness. Um, the best artists just have a reference picture and they'll they'll just interpret it however works for them and, and to get whatever picture they want. Um, unless you're doing a commission or you're drawing a famous person, there's no rule at all that says that it needs to look like the person you're trying to draw. As long as it looks like a nice picture and it looks like a person that's convincing, then it doesn't really matter too much. So here, again, I'm coming in with some sharp highlights on the lips, so using the lasso select tool to do that, and the eraser. This drawing for me was all about the nose and the lips, so that's why I've given in to temptation to kind of noodle on those so much, and, and perhaps jumped to those too early in the process so yeah apologies you're going to see a lot of time of me actually refining those two things to the detriment of everything else <laughs> so the challenging thing I found with this picture is her eyes so obviously they're quite they're in quite a lot of shadow she has got eye makeup on as well, which sometimes makes things more difficult. So just trying to figure my way through how to represent her eyes in the picture. Um, again, they weren't a really big area of focus to me, just because you can't see her eyes too well. I didn't want to try and artificially make it so that they're, you know, more, you can see them better on the drawing. Um, if anything, you want to exaggerate things. So if you can't really see her eyes in the picture on the left, don't try and find them. Maybe make that more apparent in your drawing. So maybe lose them altogether. Um, I didn't quite go down that route here. So you can still see her eyes. Um, 
and I wanted to kind of capture those a little bit but certainly you don't want to draw things that aren't there you just want to give the person looking at the picture enough information so that they know eyes are there and then their brains can fill in the blanks So her face shape is getting better. Obviously, I'm kind of spending some time working on it. Still, I think it's quite there, but sometimes it's about capturing the turning of the form. So, yes, you've got the quite harsh boundary, but on her the corner of her jaw under her ear. But if I start working on turning that form with some um, graduation between that, at the moment it's quite a sharp ending. So you can see that the dark area and the very sharp edge and then the light area if I work on developing that as a soft transition in color so working from black through the gray tones all the way to white then that, that'll turn the form and her jaw naturally will look a bit narrower so um sometimes yeah sometimes it's about just getting those edges right um to capture the right appearance I guess in picture So now that I've fixed her hair and her ear, you can see that the eye definitely is in the wrong place. Um, I think if I'd got that right first before I tried to locate the eye, or even if I'd done the Brocken right in the first place, then it wouldn't have been such a um, difficult process, I guess. Or exploratory process. <laughs> Looking back at it now, the the area of shade under her, I guess, under her chin, on the underneath the corner of her mouth on the right hand side. You look at the picture; looks a bit blobby, but maybe I'll hopefully I'll come in and fix that. Just trying to find the ear. She's got some high areas of contrast in the ear. I mean, our eyes are drawn to contrast, so you want to kind of choose which areas that you represent faithfully if you've got a few different areas of high contrast. But I think sometimes leaving the ear completely un understated just doesn't look quite right. I actually really liked the appearance of when I had that very... So you can sort of see it around the edge of her ear and the, the right hand edge of her draw, 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 not her draw, her draw, um, having that very sharp line and then using the grunge scatter tool just to knock that edge back. It, it just gives quite a cool effect actually. So I really like, I really enjoyed that and I ended up leaving that bit in. So it was at this stage I was like, actually, this is beginning to shape up something I quite like. Um, I think the good thing about drawing while you're kind of a little bit distracted and just enjoying the process is you don't really get too attached to it. Like that, that ugly stage doesn't bother you so much because, because you're just having a play really and not, you know, you're not, you're just enjoying the process rather than being too attached to the outcome. So yeah, it's still circling in on that eye, so I've gone back in and oh, you know, I've decided that I think the eyebrows are in the right place. So I've gone back in and developed that a little bit further and started to build up the eye a little bit. Um, trying to figure out where it should be. Ooh, 
I mean, looking at it now, it still doesn't look quite right, but I don't know if it's just because I've not developed the areas of shadow on her upper lids quite well enough. Um, perhaps when I actually, you know, I've lasso selected that area that's quite dark, once I build in some tone there, maybe it'll make it easier for me to see whether it's right or not. So yeah, I finally, yeah, I finally committed to something. Um, so that I can look at it and decide whether it's right. It doesn't actually look too bad looking at it now. I do suspect though if I was to overlay the, the picture on the left hand side over my drawing here, that there will be a lot of stuff that's in the wrong place. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, like, it's just the accuracy isn't quite there. But it kind of looks like her. She's got very distinctive eyebrows, um, makeup, distinctive mouth. So I think for people with very distinctive features, it, so there's a little bit more forgiveness in terms of getting other stuff wrong. So again, using that kind of collage technique to kind of develop her eyes a little bit, working the highlights, deepening the shadows and just kind of pivoting between those two. It was at this stage that I was getting some frustration in developing those really dark darks I was aiming for and I realised that I somehow wasn't using, my, I'd somehow managed to switch my colour. I don't know if it's something I'd done like to select a different colour at some point, like it was a slightly lighter grey than the pure black, but yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So now that I've got a true black, again, I'm coming in and developing those really black, you know, dark, darkest dark areas a little bit further. You can be a bit selective. So obviously the darkest dark, yes, it's, you know, it's in those areas of shadow around her face and on her eye makeup. It's also around the back of her head as well. But if I was to make those areas truly black on my picture, it, it would just be a bit much. So yes, I've darkened them up, but I've, you can see I've kept the brush quite large. So there's still quite a lot of texture and light in those areas in my drawing. I really wanted to reserve those darkest darks for the areas on and around her face rather than the background. So just noodling on the edge of her face here. And once I've got a hard edge, you've got to decide, do you want to use your drawing pen and draw from the hard edge into the light area to blend it out? Or do you want to go from the light area into the hard edge with an eraser to blend it out? Or both?
So here I'm just really looking at the whole picture. Um, I'm trying to figure out, have I really captured, you know, the range of tones I see on the left hand side. Obviously there is some interpretation. I've, her face, I've left quite light, much lighter than in the picture for sure. Um, but there should still be about the same variant, so we should still see the, the darkest darks in the right place and the lightest lights and the mid-tone should be in roughly in the same place. So really just trying to look at that and figure out what needs fixing to better represent the picture I see on the left hand side. So yeah, building, you see there, building up some tone under her face. The problem when you look at a little little area, like the highlights in her hair, is if you just look at those in isolation, you might think those highlights should be bright white. Um, but that's just because you're looking them in, in, in comparison to the areas around that, that little highlight. What you really need to make sure you're doing is just looking at the picture as a whole. So yes, the highlight in her hair looks bright compared to the hair around it, but it's still, in terms of tone, it's probably darker than even some of the dark areas on on the face. So around the chin on the right, the face on her right hand side, that's probably still lighter than those highlights in her hair. So you just need to make sure that you get that hierarchy of tones consistent, otherwise things look a little odd. <clears throat> And that's really why I think a lot of artists will say, or teachers will say, don't work on the small details before you've got the big shapes and big areas of tone correct, because then you're just gonna make those over-modeling errors. Oh, yeah, so I'm like, that area, in the that blobby area around the, underneath the corner of her mouth that's been bugging me, it looks like I was coming in there, fixing it a little bit, but it still looks quite blobby. Oh, that's really annoying me. Um, hopefully I'll come in and fix it later. I think that's why it's good to, to take breaks. Um, I did do this again all in one sitting. Um, yeah, I was I was distracted at the time because I was there was the TV on in the background. Um, I was stuffing my face with chocolate Easter eggs. I was checking my phone, I was doing lots of different things. Um, this is just really me just kind of sketching casually, but I think sometimes having a proper break from the picture, put, you know, turning the iPad off, putting it down for 10 minutes, I think would have been quite helpful for me to identify some of the problems a little bit earlier. But overall, I, I, I'm quite enjoying the way it looks. So, you know, I was, I was quite enjoying this process because I was getting that boost of quite liking the way the picture looked and quite liking the output. So I think that does make it a little bit easier. And sometimes I don't really want to ruin that either. So if you might, you might see where the, I stop for a little bit. I'm just looking at it and trying to figure out what do I really need to fix and what can I just leave. So it's about here that I kind of looked at the whole picture and decided actually I was kind of pretty happy with it. So I kind of stopped here. I mean, I could have carried on and developed some more areas, but I was pretty happy with the way it looked. And so I just decided to finish. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, have a go yourself. It's actually a surprisingly fun challenge. Um, have a good day, everyone.